You ever wonder what those big words are when we're talking about knee conditions? I'm going into knee anatomy today to help you guys out to dig through the research. Okay, so with runner's knee, the area in question is the knee cap right here, okay? If you have the person relaxed, have them relax their quad, and you can actually shake this thing and you can see the patellar tent or the patella moving around like that. Below it is the patellar tendon. We did a video on patellar tendonitis, which is about here to here. The quad tendon is above it. There's the quad and the IT band. Let's spin her leg a little bit. And if we take it and grab it like this, we can see this structure start to define here. You trace it all the way down and it gets all the way down into the, into the tibia or the shin bone right there. So with, the, with runner's knee, actually what we're looking at is we're looking at the area underneath the cap. The pain is gonna feel like it's underneath. And a lot of times when you take this and you press it down on the person, they're gonna jump, okay? And a lot of times if they contract their quad and you, and you press in, they're gonna jump as well. So go ahead and relax there. So what we're looking at in regards to mechanism of injury is actually we found that the femur turns but the patella stays lateral okay versus the idea that the patella or the kneecap actually goes lateral on its own what controls the internal femoral rotation of the thigh is the muscles up into the hip and also having a stable core so what happens here in patellar or in a runner's knee is the kneecap remains stable again this rotates outward and then we start grinding this section underneath the cap onto the femur below it and actually has a groove that it sits in. So we're just grinding the heck out of the outer part right there and it really pisses off the cartilage. So what we're looking at here, remember those mechanics we talked about earlier, this dropping forward, this spinning this way, this caving in and so on and we have all this stuff going on. Now let's put some of this anatomy in. Let's just say we're looking at the rectus femoris, which is one of the quad muscles. It's the top one. It goes from the hip, actually, sorry, from the pelvis. And I'll spin this guy so you can see. From the pelvis down into the kneecap. So it attaches right into there. Now, let's just imagine from this point forward that actually my fist is the kneecap, okay? Because I want to show you that, and I'm going to show you, spin the femur underneath it, kind of how, how it happens when you're degrading away look at how it doesn't really it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what this femur does underneath my patella or, or my fist has the ability to stay in the exact same spot now the reason why that's important is because look at this kneecap here this kneecap has the ability to move it's it's a floating bone it's a sesamoid it it, it can move around but relatively to this thing spinning underneath it. Look how it shifts right there, okay? What we've learned in the past was that this kneecap was sliding to the side, so we say it was laterally tracking. But again, that MRI study showed us that relatively the femur moves and this kneecap stays right there. So what happens is, is the amount of force which is supposed to go through this side and this side and, and is supposed to disperse it really, really nicely, it's actually gonna be driving on the outer part. So we have 100% of the load driving down the outer part here, degrading that cartilage away and softening it. That's why they call it chondromalacia patella because it's a cartilage softening. That's literally what it means. Rather than having it sit right in the middle, which would then allow both sides to take some of the load that you have when you're running, landing, jumping on it. So if you want the reference to this, I will include this. It'll be on the link to my main article which will then all have all the references on it. I'm not going to put all of them on the YouTube thing. I'll have them actually when you go through and read the article. So read the article. I'm going to say it in a little bit different way, and we're going to have this video embedded right there in case that's where you're watching it as well. Um, make sure to share this with your friends, and if you want to, if you have a blog, share it on your blog. I will show you exactly how to embed it because I think the more people we educate about this, the less running injuries, overuse injuries we're going to have because these are totally preventable. If you want to learn how to actually prevent it, we have a class we're going to put on, and this is how we rehab in here, so you can actually learn what the experts do, or hopefully you consider me an expert, what we do to decrease the possibility of running injuries. Take care, guys. Talk to you soon.